Mike, welcome. Thank you. So you've been involved in climate change a long time. And a lot of people in this room also, and on the live stream. What keeps you motivated and what keeps you going? I, I think I never grew up, actually. <laughs> um, I was always told when I was a child that, uh, you know, the environment mattered and, and that idea that the, the Earth was actually an integral part of human existence, and I believed them. So when I started work, um, I, I suddenly discovered that actually people didn't really want me to do anything about that. They sort of wanted me to leave that at the door. And I just never grew up, so I didn't. And uh, so that's really part of how I think I keep going. I'm just very passionate about the issue. But the motivation, actually drawing on Charmaine's talk, really, is about being active. That's what keeps me going. And uh, I think, for me, one of the things that I really believe matters is that you should try and do things that you don't necessarily know how to finish. If it's the right thing to do, just have a go. And it's amazing how people come around you, that serendipity kicks in, and, and people just reach out and help. And uh, the number of projects that I've done where I had no idea how to get it through and across the finishing line, but actually just getting on, doing the right thing, it'll work out. So naivety serves you well. Aye, naivety and just <laughs> general hope. <laughs> um, you've described this next decade as a decade of hope. Is that not unduly optimistic? I think we live in a very divided world and there's lots of things that are sort of pulling us apart and making things difficult. But fundamentally, climate change is a shared issue and it is the greatest opportunity for us to come together as a global community around a shared agenda and actually deliver something really positive and meaningful. So what's stopping us? <laughs> Lots of things stopping us, I guess. A lot of people are trying to do that. But um, for me, I think a lot of it comes down to understanding. I was having a meeting with finance companies recently, not that long ago, and they were very excited. They were talking about the nine trillion of disinvested funds on the international market. But they also said something that really struck me, and that was that they were surprised as a global community that coal had become uninvestable in the space of two or three years. And when I heard that comment, I realized two things. The first was that they really shouldn't have been surprised. It was fairly obvious 20 years previously that coal was not something we wanted to see you know, perpetuate into the future. But the other thing I realized was that I could actually read the future as far as they were concerned. Because I've been steeped in this world for so long, it's not a surprise. So we took that as a, a prompt to try to help businesses get up to speed quickly. I'm not, I, I really feel that we have to target people of my generation and older to sort this problem out now. And we need, if we want people to change, what I have learned is you've got to make it as easy as possible for people to change. And that's why we produced a, a course aimed at managers to try to help share the information that everybody should know. And considering it's going to affect every facet of our lives, every, every facet of business, it's where you're going to get your resources, your staff, every single facet, the legislation that's coming, all of this, it's market prescience. So if you don't know it, why are you running a business? So it's really important that people wake up to the issue understand their responsibility, but most importantly, I think, focus on the solutions, focus on the doing. And um, I want to, to ask you about a couple of big issues. Uh-oh. <laughs> and how to solve them. Great. Um, in particular, money, you mentioned finance there, agency, and uppiness. Well, money... Um, I, I believe very strongly, there's a very famous quote, that you judge a government by its budget. If you don't finance something, how is it going to happen? And if you say something and you're committed to something, why aren't you putting resource behind it? So we absolutely must find ways to finance this transition. 
There's a strong evidence that maybe 2% GDP to move that transition forward now. In Scotland, that's three and a half billion pounds a year. That's less than the public expenditure budget for Scotland. But maybe we need new ways of doing that, maybe new ways of finding money. I'd love to see some sort of future generations fund based on some, some taxation, possibly even on renewables, that we actually build, a bit like the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. What an amazing legacy that is to pass over to young people that we're properly investing in their future and we're actually creating serious wealth to allow them to help move that transition forward. So money's critical, it's an absolute measure of genuine commitment. But agency is really important and something I come across with businesses all the time. We were running a sustainability event with a large corporate and they came up with 170 ways that they could improve their business. And then suddenly at the end of the day, having had this exciting, positive, very dynamic sort of event, they sort of, there was a collective slump of the shoulders in the room. And I sort of probed this and asked why suddenly everybody looked a bit downhearted. And they said that they couldn't enact any of these 170-odd ideas. And I'm like, well, why? What on earth are you on about? Surely you can enact this. And they cited this really futile example, which was that they had a coffee company that provided coffee for their headquarters office. And in the contract, it said they weren't allowed to bring their own mug. Now, don't get me wrong, you're not going to solve the climate crisis by bringing your own mug to a coffee shop. But it was actually symbolic of their lack of empowerment, their lack of traction within the business. And so agency is critical. What we have to do, and managers have to do, is they've got to give the people that want to do the right thing the power, the authority, the mandate, the traction. In Scotland in 2009, we passed a climate act for 42% reductions by 2020. The most important, in my opinion, outcome of that act was it empowered people in all sorts of organizations to actually start to do the right thing. Joined Uppiness as well, you forgot. Yeah, yeah Uppiness. <laughs> yeah, Joined Uppiness. This is a classic. We're not very good at Joined Uppiness. We've got more and more and more specialist, more siloed, and we've forgotten to join it back up together. Transport, classic case in point. Nobody in aviation talks to anybody in rail, talks to anybody in roads, talks to anyone in active travel. There are really big problems out there. The best example I had, just for a laugh, is I was talking to an academic at a university that I won't name, and I said, oh, you must know so-and-so. And he said, no, I've never heard of them. I said, you must know them, they're in your department. He said, no, no, honestly, I've never heard of them. And we came out of his office and he locked his door because we're going to go and get a coffee. And it was the next door had this guy's name on it. And you're like, good grief, you're not even talking to people in your own department. We really need to open up the conversation. And a classic case in point, think about anything you want, but retail came across recently. We have a real problem with town centres. Don't just ask retailers what the answer is. Ask all the people that bring solutions. Same with agriculture. Don't just ask farmers what the answer is. We know we need it to be much broader. So bring in the land managers, bring in the others that can help, the scientists that can support that, and start actually valuing all the different uh, expertise and issues that people can bring. We need to spend time more joined up -y. Joined up in us. Um, so ha I have to ask this question, but how did you get, manage to get involved in so many different areas? I guess my, I'm very fortunate. I have, um, I'm an idiot. And I, I'm always looking for where effort's required, always looking for the things that we can do next. Every single one of us is on a journey, and we're all at different points on that journey. Some of us are on that journey through choice, and some of us are going to be on that journey whether we like it or not, because climate change is not optional. So wherever you are on that journey, A, I think recognize that, recognize there's always a next step, and what is that next step? So for me, I'm quite fortunate that I've managed to get to a point where I can dip into different places. I'm involved in agriculture because that's one of the areas that's not showing reductions at the moment. I'm involved in transport for the same reason. I'm involved in climate education because I think there's a great need. And I'm involved in city development and city advice because again, cities is part of the whole framework, like Glasgow obviously with its net zero commitments. So I'm, all I do is tend to move 
where are most needed. So what do you think we can all do when it comes to tackling climate change? There's lots of things each of us can do, but the thing I always want to ask for first is that I want you to welcome change. We all know we need to change. Business as usual is a dirty word in climate change. So if it's the way that we've always done it, don't do it that way. The thing that I think is really possible going forwards is that we genuinely need to rethink everything. Everything's on the table. So we need the best of everybody to step up and play a part. Everything is up for grabs. Even the way we count our money. GDP is a terrible measure of success. Everybody knows that. Even Simon Kuznets that invented GDP thought it was a terrible measure of success. And yet we continue to use it and don't look more broadly. So the first thing is just absolutely we need to embrace all of everybody's skills, bring the best of yourself to out and be innovative and thoughtful and creative. We absolutely need that because we have never been sustainable as a species. So we need to do it for the first time ever. But the other thing I want to ask you for is permission. We know we need to change, but we keep holding back change. So permit change, allow change, demand change. Politicians will not do this on their own. The only brave politicians are ex-politicians. You know, we've got to help them. We've got to provide the political space and demand the change in order to move this forwards. So I would ask everybody to allow change, embrace change, and, and permit change. On that note, Mike Robertson, thank you very much. Thank you.